Is anyone else itching to go back to Wakanda already? It's still a bit of a wait for Black Panther 2 to take us there, but I think a familiar face will be waiting for us there. Killmonger. First things first, though. We need to take a second to acknowledge the loss of our king. Chadwick Boseman unfortunately passed away from a struggle that he was fighting with across the filming of all of his MCU appearances. He was a true legend, and if you haven't already seen his performances in movies like 42, Get On Up, and Marshall, check them out. Still, we'll always remember him as the one true king of Wakanda, Black Panther. The loss of both Chadwick Boseman and T'Challa will likely be a driving force for Black Panther 2. How could it not be? The grace and wisdom that T'Challa brought to Wakanda took the long-hidden nation into the spotlight. Unfortunately, it looks like the duty of following this dream to fruition will fall to his sister, Shuri. While she will no doubt prove to be up to the task, this won't exactly make all of the other Wakandans happy. If you don't remember, back in Black Panther, it was pretty clear that there was a division between traditionalist Wakandans and progressive Wakandans. M'Baku made it very clear that he was not a big fan of Shuri or the technological innovations Wakanda had made. Then there are the border tribesmen who turned against T'Challa in the first movie for his progressive beliefs. Seeing as T'Challa's open door policy brought a literal alien invasion to their door, I'm not thinking they're going to have changed their minds. Nor will their new leader change them either. <laughs> Shuri makes T'Challa look like an old-school Wakandan. She's got a genius intellect, which seems to have reshaped Wakanda's technological structure. Not only that, but she seems very familiar with popular culture outside of Wakanda. She represents the youth, vitality, and open-mindedness that it seems like Wakanda desperately needs, even if it's not what Wakanda desperately wants. Let's face it, Queen Shuri would be 90% of the Wakandans' worst nightmares, and this wouldn't be a thing they would take lightly. So let's take a second to talk about some potential new characters that will almost definitely appear in the sequel. For starters, the comics character most likely to appear in the sequel is the incredibly creepy Achebe. Rumor has it that this role may be played by Lakeith Stanfield, which would be perfect. This guy was seemingly uh, taken out of the mortal world, but sold his soul to Marvel's take on the devil, Mephisto. He came back more sadistic and ruthless than ever. Achebe managed to take revenge on those that attacked him, and then went on to nearly conquer Wakanda through his strategic brilliance. The other villain who could likely make an appearance is a villain by the name of Madame Slay. This longtime romantic interest for the comic Killmonger has the power to control Killmonger and once helped revive him from the dead with the help of the Mandarin. Seeing as the Mandarin will be introduced in Shang-Chi, the uh, real Mandarin this time, it's possible this could play out exactly as it did in the comics. We could see Madame Slay take Killmonger's body to resurrect him so that he could see his plan for a Wakandan Empire through. Then Killmonger could rely on Achebe's genius and sadistic mind to help him take the throne and keep it this time. Shuri will likely be focused on trying to keep her brother's dream of coexistence with the world with so much passion that she'd be distracted from the doom surrounding her. So how would this all go down? I think that depends entirely upon the journey Shuri will take in her first leading role. You see, she has the opposite problem T'Challa had in the first film. He took over Wakanda and made bold choices that none of his forefathers ever would have. Shuri's journey, on the other hand, won't be so much about changing Wakanda as it will be about keeping Wakanda on the path T'Challa laid out. Honestly, this is going to be pretty tough. Not only because of all the various challenges she'll come up against, but also because it's likely she won't be able to summon all the powers of the Black Panther. Panther. Towards the end of the last movie, Killmonger made a somewhat rash decision to burn all the heart-shaped herbs so that there wouldn't be another Black Panther. That means that there likely won't be any for Shuri to take, so she might be forced to go up against Killmonger with a full-blown revolution without the powers of the Black Panther. In one corner, we'd have Team Killmonger with Madame Slay and Achebe backing Eric up. In the other, we'd have Team Black Panther with Nakia and Okoye at the ready to protect the Queen. Slay would likely take on Okoye because who wouldn't want to see Okoye beat up someone who can control leopards and is named Madam Slay? That fight alone would be worth the price of a movie ticket. Then we'd have Okoye going up against the tricky Achebe and he'd likely give her some trouble. 
The real main event would be Shuri vs. Killmonger. This would be the ultimate showdown for Shuri to prove that she is worthy of her brother's mantle by taking down his archenemy. Only this time, the Black Panther wouldn't take Eric out. She would respect what was likely one of T'Challa's greatest regrets, taking Killmonger's life. In the end, she might even do the impossible and bring Killmonger in. He knows firsthand all the problems in the world Wakanda could help with. Shuri could prove to him that T'Challa's work actually did good in the world and that they could accomplish more together. This would actually have Shuri treading new ground that her brother wished he could have achieved. Then, the movie could end with the two of them at the same basketball court Shuri and T'Challa visited, ready to carry on his work together. Well, there you have it. How Killmonger could return in Black Panther 2. Do you think Killmonger should return for the sequel? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe to CBR.